Okay, everybody, the America's Winter Playoffs. My name is TJ, I'm joined by that admirable. And we're about to bring you some semifinal action uh, here at the, the Winter Playoffs. Stockpone versus Frozen. Yeah, they're work not quite done just yet. They got over the big hump here, making it to the Bahamas, but still a couple more matches if they want to become America's Winter Champion. There you can see Doc Pone uh, able to take out Leo Main and Frozen in a fairly tight set versus Amnesiac. The Finja Warrior just continues to perform. Yeah, there's a, a heck of a lot of glory on the line for these players to, to being named the champion. You know, they're, they're probably all elated that they're going to be going to the Bahamas, but I think there's a little bit inside all of them that really wants to win the entire thing and could call themselves the tournament winners. There's Doc Pwn and Frozen on your screen right now getting ready. Keep in mind, Doc Pwn has not lost a game in the winter playoffs yet. Yeah. Or not a game, a match, I'm sorry. Yeah, has a, a match. <laughs> not a game. He's not undefeated. <laughs> a match. He's not lost a match in the winter playoffs. Yeah, and something about this Montreal location is just the winners show up there. Sidonia and Monsanto, the other two players competing. Uh, Sidonia, of course, won a championship, and Monsanto found himself in the top eight of Summers last year. And, and that's an incredible feat now. Doc Pone is going to be finding himself in the winter championship. So that location putting up back to back to back championship players. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to point out is uh, all three of those players who, have, who are at that location right now, the only three players from Montreal, all the championships, like you mentioned. The entire province of Quebec has less population than New York City. And these guys are putting up this amount of results. These, uh, these Quebecois players are really showing up to, to a lot of these championships. And, yeah. and uh, you know, Sidonia has a championship under his belt. Monsanto, uh, even though he didn't win, he, he, he won a lot of hearts and minds with his combo style play. So I think Doc Pony really wants to, to put a stamp on this whole tournament. And uh, really, you know, go all the way, not lose a match, win the tournament, and call himself the winner. Yeah, I mean that that stamp on your resume is certainly something. If Doc if Doc Pone can have this be a major breakout performance, that is part of what HCT is all about. You know, we saw names like Doctor Hippie become household names last year as he made his way through and eventually became the runner up at uh, the World Championships. For Frozen, this is another win that he's seeking. He's had a, a wonderful career for himself. And I believe his most recent win was uh, the, the PAX Prime Major that was put on. And so it's been a while since he's closed out a big one. Uh, this is certainly one he's looking forward to. He's playing from the Fairfax, uh, Virginia location, where we've seen a number of competitors continue to put up a string of results there. Although quite a larger uh, attendance at that particular location as well. Yeah, Dr. J, we just saw him. He's at Fairfax as well. So I believe the location is called the Cave Gaming Center. So that sounds cool. You know, I... I uh, as many gamers have, have done, uh, I used to live in a basement and like being there in like the cold and, you know, sort of no sunlight coming in and, and being able to just sit there in that, that cave environment when you're playing Hearthstone. It sounds like a pretty cool environment to be in and especially with all those people there. We got some glimpses of it before uh, from the, we had a few shots of, of the cave location in Fairbanks and it looks so cool. Something that I'm very envious of, as, as Lothar mentioned earlier. So time to jump into the gameplay. Let's go Frozen versus Doc Pone, semifinal number one for the America's Winter Playoffs. Yeah, Doc Pone gonna be on Arena Mage to start and Frozen gonna be on Pirate Warrior. And uh, Pirate Warrior, of course, uh, there's no, not really much subtlety to this deck. It likes to get on the ground running and try to punish their opponent for not having early answers to minions. And Doc Pone's deck, that's kind of exactly what his deck's designed to do. It's simply designed to offset the early game from Frozen in this position and then stabilize with massive board effects towards the end, whether it's board clear from Kazakus, whether it's a full heal from Reno Jackson. If he's got the tools to do it, he, it's easy for him to take the game home. So I was on camera yesterday saying that I didn't like the Water Warrior cho choice from Frozen. Uh, the Water Warrior being the Murlocs ad addition to the uh, Power Warrior deck. I just didn't feel like it was that great. After seeing it, watching Frozen play with it, and watching some of the highlights that we've seen, and you know, seeing Frozen's reasoning behind it in his interview, I can I can see why it, it, it works out in, in a lot of these matches in his lineup. I still think that standard Pirate Warrior has a slight edge over it, but it definitely can do some explosive things and the, the, the turnaround potential that Finja plus Murloc pa package and offer can really help in mirror matchups and it can help with those mid-game board board interactions. Yep, and here we see Doc Pone just choosing to arcane intellect and look for some more answers. That is gonna leave him a little bit vulnerable to some damage push here. But with Volcanic Potion and Arcane Blast, he's able to clear out the uh, the Frothing Berserker. But now he draws Blood Mage, and Blood Mage may change his mind on how he wants to approach this. Suddenly, Blood Mage Volcanic Potion on the following turn looks pretty appealing. So Kazakus pretty much always looks appealing though. 
Yeah, Kazaka is as much harder to squeeze into a turn, the four mana. You have to spend the four mana now, and then you have to spend the five mana on the potion. So um, it, it can sometimes be beneficial to get that out a little bit earlier, especially if you have tools to stabilize after that. So he's taking a while to, we can't see the potions, and, and we apologize for that, but he's taking a while to choose his selection. So uh, maybe not the best options for him. Usually four damage to all minions is an insta-take, and then after that, seven armor, you know, draw cards. Uh, summon minions that have died, those are also insta-takes, so... Uh, we'll see, we'll get a look on this potion once he actually finishes selecting uh, the final option. Here. Yeah, it is important to just take your time, too. If he just snap picks the options, Frozen can uh, maybe get a read on that. You know, the quicker you take them, usually the easier it was for you. So, balancing the amount of time you take there, I think is actually fairly important. Uh, I saw, uh, it's hard to see, but I saw draw two cards. Yeah, deal four and draw two cards uh, is the potion here from Doc Pone. And the draw two actually fairly important in this matchup because he does need to find ways to stabilize his life total. The fact that Frothing Berserker didn't get checked, that the Murloc Warlier lived on board. These things mean that Doc Pone is under pressure, so he has to find Reno. The problem with this is he's got nine cards in hand right now, so if he chooses to use that Kazakus potion, he's going to go to ten. A card will get burned. Rough potion, then. <laughs> yeah, maybe... maybe uh, Add two Goodness. demons was probably one of the options. Maybe give your minions plus plus four health. You know, the plus four health uh, option wouldn't have looked that unappealing in it's this cool. situation. I can't imagine Frozen ever trading onto the board here. Well, let's see if he can remove without it. He has Blood Mage, Thalnos, plus uh, Frostbolt, plus Arcane Blast. He still has the potion as well, so he could simply trade in Kazakus, the Volcanic Potion, that is. Uh, he could simply trade in the Kazakus to Frothing Berserker, Slap Blood Mage down, Volcanic Potion. That draws him a card, and it clears off the board. Yeah, he's got multiple ways to clear the board, actually. So Blood Mage is involved with, with both of those uh, that we talked about. We'll see if he, he values the Volcanic Potion with Spot Removal yep. over it. And it looks like Spot Removal, or it is. He's going to hold on to Frostbolt and Arcane Blast. Yeah, the difference between holding on to the Spot Removal here and not is the difference between drawing a card immediately and then also being able to play minions alongside uh, some of your removal spells. And he's going to run into Arcanite Reaper and double Dread Corsair, so holding on to this spot removal may have been the right call, but one of these Dread Corsairs appears to be living this turn. And he's okay with just playing both of them because he wants to extend on the board and force out AoE. He also already has a pirate in his hand. Oh, Actually, baby. Blood Soul Cultist. What is with Reno Jackson today? A Reno Jackson. On turn never, six. It's never late, TJ. A Reno Jackson arrives precisely when he means to when the Reno Jackson is just right. Now, that being said, Frozen does have a lot of post-Reno damage here. He's, he's able to, to clock for six, uh, upgrade the weapon, and then swing for six more. And he draws Fiery War Axe on top of that. So he still has some gas here, but this board likely to get wiped away. And I think that's why you're going to see Frozen actually attack this Reno Jackson. Don't know if that's the wise choice, though. If he runs into Flame Strike, he's, he's pretty much done either way. Yeah. yeah this is... Plus there's a Kazakus potion, but he didn't see the potion the turn after Kazakus. I'm guessing his read is that it's not uh, four damage in that spot. Whew. That's some heat. This one's... Ooh! Finley, if this picks up Life Tap, there might be a chance. A small chance. Oh. Oh, well, no. <laughs> that's not Life Tap. That's a single point of damage every turn. So, uh, over the next three turns, Frozen has got... 12 plus 3 from the hero power. That's not enough damage. And 6 of that's getting swiped away right now by this Acidic Swamp Ooze. And there you can see Frozen's road to get to this point. A very tough road. And he's just going to scoop it up once he sees the Ooze. And rightfully so. Doc Phone had completely stabilized that game. Yeah, Frozen, you know, not really much he can do with, when Reno's on turn 6. I, I felt like he maximized his damage well early on. Uh, he, you know, made the read that there was no damage from the Kazakus Potion. Realized that he wasn't going to win if Flamestrike was going to come out and made the trade into the Reno. I definitely like the way he played, uh, but the nature of those Reno matches is, you know, if they have Kazakus Reno, it's going to be very tough for you to win those matchups. Yeah, Reno Jackson really the big kicker card. If, if you, can, you can recover from Kazakus. I mean, sometimes the potion's really devastating, but uh, it doesn't re-stabilize the game. It simply buys you time. Uh, the Reno Jackson, however, um, it buys you, like, all the time, and... That's usually enough to do it. I, you know, it's buying you too much time. All Kazakus, of the time. Yeah, it's just <laughs> infinite time at that point. You, you win. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, sometimes, yeah, I, you know, post-reno damage, all that nonsense. 
you can you can get, get in there if, if maybe a flame strike wasn't there that minion damage could have been it could have been worth it we saw in, in watts games earlier reno priest doesn't have nearly as many stabilizing tools as reno mage so uh, even despite having reno he would he still wasn't able to take it out so uh, now frozen uh, a game behind and you could tell when that reno came out he wasn't upset he, he you know he didn't like put his head in his hands he just kind of gave a little giggle a little chuckle to himself it, it's hard to to be tilted when you're you're so still riding that happiness from qualifying for the Bahamas, but uh, I'm sure that he he really wants to win. Man, and I mean, Warlock versus deep. Warlock. I mean, he needs these players want that championship. This is it. Can you become the champion of the Americas? It's not as simple as as the ticket to the Bahamas. That's obviously a very big point. Being champion, that's what all these players want. Yeah. All right, well, Reno Warlock versus Reno Warlock. And uh, we'll see if he can come back. Uh, the decks match up a little bit, um, a little bit odd. They, bo they both sort of, you know, run that, uh, actually, Frozen doesn't run that combo package. Uh, so that could be a difference. Uh, but Frozen, uh, he, he's no stranger to being behind in, in some of these series. So we actually sat down and talked with Frozen uh, about uh, what he does when he's behind in the series. When you fall behind, it's just the most important to not get nervous. Don't think about losing. Just keep playing as optimally as you can. Yeah, and uh, he Frozen is one of those players that always can can find those those outs. And uh, apologies for what I mentioned earlier. Frozen is running uh, the combo version. I was looking at a a different deck list. He also has low curve though. He has Ascension Shieldmaster in his Reno deck which sort of fits that low curve uh, archetype. He also has Corruption, which is one of those cards that you sort of use when you're trying to play against Antiago just to remove the things off the board. So both players went into combo. This type of Reno deck can come down to maximizing the, the combo potential in the later stages of the game. Yeah, uh, something interesting to note is, is about the low curve Reno Warlock that Frozen's running. Uh, he's got a copy of Voidwalker in here as well, just to try to stave off pressure. One of the big ones is he doesn't actually have a Mountain Giant in the deck. Uh, that's usually a really heavy hitting card. Here, Doc Pwn uh, gets a Mountain Giant, but the Corruption really shining through. This is really the purpose of this card. It's not to answer tricky early minions, although it can be used for that. The The big one about it is when you run into like Flame Wreath Faceless, when you run into Mountain Giant, those are difficult cards to clear without usually a direct answer. So if, if Frozen goes with uh, corruption in this spot. He's protecting the brand with Voidwalker here. That Mountain Giant's gonna die. He got value off the Dark Peddler. The interesting one to me is that he chose Dragon Egg over the second Corruption. To me, that's a bit strange. I mean, if Corruption's a card you're playing in your deck, that second one feels like it could be very useful. You know, you think Twilight Drake, maybe. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, even though putting an extra card in your hand doesn't have any detriment towards Reno, maybe Frozen just really likes to get into that Reno spirit and not have any copies of a card, <laughs> even if given the opportunity to. Yeah, that's why he takes a five mana and then a 10 mana Kazakus potion. Exactly. Yeah. He's, he really just doesn't want any of those duplicates. He thinks it's against the rules. Yeah, I mean, what's Dragon Egg really Lost doing in this matchup? Energy. It's protection against AOE. You know, it actually could be a nod to Dirty Rat, where if he just has minions in his hand that he doesn't want you know, pulled away, one of the ways that you protect against the dirty rat percentage is by simply having extra minions in your hand. Yeah, and his other the other minion was Secret Keeper, so I'd probably rather have a Dragon Egg than a Secret Keeper. I, think I would too, just because it sort of protects you against AOE. But Doc Pwn going to use that Mountain Giant to trade over, and unfortunately, let it die. Nothing he can really do there. Yeah, Frozen, I imagine, is is going to start this life tap train as well. Doc Pwn uh, needs to get something on board to try to handle this brand. He hasn't seen anything that, that punishes him just yet, but every turn that sticks around, it's a little bit dangerous for him. He gets a little bit closer to Kazakus. Yeah, and every single turn that, that Doc Pwn's got to apply pressure and that four goes a life tap, that's an edge for Frozen. His brand is actually quite a big nuisance right now. And now kind of great players for Doc Pwn. He's got some pretty good ones. He could just play second rate Bruiser now, which will challenge the brand the following turn. Yeah, he's giving up life taps that way, though. He could play Doomsayer. I don't mind the Doomsayer. And because Brand's not going to challenge a Doomsayer, he's seen Shadow Bolt. He's got a, he's got a keep Siphon life Soul would be used on it. 
Yeah, this is tough. Again, Frozen hasn't punished you with Kazakus just yet, so I think there is some merit to maybe leaving that for another turn. Or again, just going for the Doomsayer. Yeah, if he goes for the Doomsayer, he also has to be worried about Dirty Rat. Well, he looks like he's going to Dirty Rat and Doomsayer. If this pulls out the Dragon Egg, Frozen's a genius! Nope. Nice. Yeah, still worked out. I mean, the point is to loot those percentages, and mm -hmm. Dockpone going to drop his own Doomsayer. So Frozen, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's some real consideration to Siphon Soul in this spot. Protecting that brand yet again is extremely valuable. It's clear that Doc Pone is struggling to handle Bran. But is Frozen willing to spend a Siphon Soul to protect a Bran with the hopes of getting value? It's not guaranteed value because he still hasn't picked up any minions that can combo with it. It's a good question too, because if you look at Doc Pone's list, it's much greedier than, than typical Reno lists we see. Uh, in addition to having combo, he's also got Ragnaros in here. There's a Sylvanas at some point in here. These are cards that we haven't seen a lot of these decks run in quite some time simply because they need to handle aggressive decks better. And Frozen's going to be really sad when he sees this Shadow Bolt because he used a Siphon Soul to kill a Doomsayer to protect Indeed. a Senjin Shield Master and a Bran. Yeah, the Bran is really what he was protecting here. I think the Senjin is just no, a no, bonus. No, 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 <laughs> no. That, you're going to want that 3-5 tot. <laughs> Let's be real here. Every card you put in your deck is special. Has a purpose. Send your shield master. Its purpose is... Absorb an Arcanite Reaper hit. <laughs> Absorb an Ar Ar Arcanite Reaper hit. Or... It's like half a news. You know, I could take out some saucy deck hands, a small-time Buccaneer. Some Buccaneers, yeah. It's a Buccaneer killer. Doc Pone really thinking through... You have to factor in, why would he use a Siphon Soul? He hasn't got value out of this brand yet. Did he draw a card nice. that gives him value out of brand? Out of Hunting brand? for value from, from brand is, is sort of... Do I play, do I Shadow Bolt this or do I play Second Rank Bruiser? Ragnar was picked up after Siphon Soul was used. And this is that end game for Doc Pone starting to come into effect here. Now that'll be a clear for Frozen and an Abyssal Enforcer, but I imagine Doc Pone has got his sights set on Senor Del Fuego here. It's looking mighty good. Ragnaros. You can see it in his face. Lord. His face is like, well. Might as well get that Ragnaros playing. I mean you just saw you Siphon Soul. You just saw it. And if he twist if if he twisting nethers just your rag, maybe he's worried about dying. No. Well the thing about it Can't is die. the Ragnaros here, say it misses. Frozen then has multiple options on how to clear this. What's a miss, though? It's, it's a good point. Maybe Face isn't a miss. I mean, he does have Leroy and Faceless Manipulator in hand, so starting to assemble a combo as well. There you can see Doc Poen. Uh, not an easy road for him to get here. Either Terrence M, uh, runner-up at DreamHack Austin. Nostum, the Winter Championship runner-up last year. Tare, through to the Bahamas at this point. Dr. J, also through to the Bahamas. Silent Storm was ninth in tiebreakers, so one away from making it to that top eight. Yeah, and he, he, he beat all those guys. Yeah, Silent Storm, uh, I'm sorry, Doc Pone, he settles on second rank Bruiser and Earth Ring Farseer here, and, and I feel like he gets a bit punished by this. Now, this Abyssal Enforcer connects with Face, and Frozen sets up a Dragon Egg, which can help absorb a Ragnaros shot. Or leave you with a 2-1, if he, if he tries to clear with a Hellfire or an Abyssal Enforcer. That's Reno Jackson then, if he's life tapping. Yeah. But that's initiative over to Frozen. Initiative over, but right now Frozen's hand is is very lacking in just stuff to throw it on the board. That's very helpful. Wow. That's aggressive. I like it. I think I like it too. I mean, the trade is even in Arena right now. I don't think Frozen is you know, necessarily upset when he sees Shadow Flame in a spot like this. Your magic shall not save you. Spellbreaker Mortal Coil. Yeah, a little upset about that. Yeah, that one's quite punishing. But Emperor Thorson is now the missing piece of this puzzle. Look at this, Doc Pony's up. Oh, nah, not gonna swing. <laughs> that would have been something. Yeah, that would have been heavily punished by AOE. 
Frozen, another power woman picked up. Now, uh, what's Frozen's game plan here? Well, it's, I imagine Sun Fury Protector is, again, Frozen's cards are just kind of a nuisance to Doc Poe. Everything's just absorbing damage and creating these weird board states. Uh, Frozen can't quite afford to just rip that twisting nether again because of the top end that he fears from Doc Pwn. He's already used that Siphon Soul, so the twisting nether is is about it. Yeah, and Doc Pwn picks up Bran, which means Bran Kazakis is now an option. He's got the lead on the board. Draxus, sometimes a liability in this in this particular matchup. Not always in the matchup, but in the matchup when both players are running combo. Not being able to go above 15 outside of Kazakus potions or, you know, Dark Peddler into Shifter's Eris into Alley Arbor Smith. Doc Pone here with a kind of a weird option. It always feels strange to take six damage all minions when you're ahead on board. And add three random demons looks a lot more appealing than the other two options. I mean, maybe the freeze is fine, but it's a six damage attached to it. I, I can't imagine. Summon an 8 demon. What? No Icar of Undeath presented for Doc Pwn. Well, that six health could be really good as well. Yeah, with the board lead, it could be, but Icar of Undeath is one of the best ones you can do in this situation because you can force out AoE and then instantly reload with the 10 mana Kazakus potion, re summoning your minions. Yeah. So I'm sure he was looking for that one, but I, you know, getting two Kazakus potions, regardless of what they do, is usually pretty good. Yeah, and the board state getting a bit scary for Frozen at this point. He's got to find a way to answer this, and honestly, Twisting Nether might still not be strong enough here. If he gives it up, he, I mean, he just saw two Kazakus potions on the other side. That's a lot of potential value he'd, he'd be facing down. And now Frozen actually has Coin and Leroy Jenkins' Faceless Manipulator and Power Overwhelming. He can actually access all uh, of those pieces naturally. So if he pieces together four more damage and can fade some taunts... That's the reason he's playing this Reno Jackson right here, his, his, now his major goal is to just simply connect for four damage and then burst Doc Pwn out of the game. And something to really think about is you're used to Emperor Thorson enabling that combo. If Doc Pwn forgets that coin also enables it, he could just lose. I've heard some little tricks that some players do to try and, you know, keep track of if the coin is still in their opponent's hand. You know, there's some people that uh, they never interact with the board. You know, the little, uh, you know, breaking the window right there or playing with the well. All these little board interactions that we're conveniently pointing out for you. Uh, you never touch the board at all unless your opponent has played the coin. And they just do a little bit of interaction, whether it's, you know, change the landscape of the board or one of those things that, that becomes permanently attached to the board. And then you just train yourself to only ever do that if your opponent plays the coin. I've heard some players that do that. It really helps them keep track. Yep. Some players just have really good memories, and they're, they're hyper-focused on the game they can remember. But that is something that players use tr lose track of a lot of, a lot of the time. And, yeah, and use chain slams. Yeah. Like that. In this type of situation, he might be able to get punished for it. Rag is played, and this could be huge. Yeah, this is much more the kind of board state that Frozen's looking for to be able to twist together. But taking eight damage maybe making him a little uncomfortable, but here, setting the Doomsayer, now trying to buy back initiative, and that's the purpose of the Twisting Nether Doomsayer, is to set up your board again so that you can connect uh, damage to your opponent. And here, Doc Pwn, he may be relegated to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. He's actually gonna take this time to set up Draxes. If he sets up Draxes, he is dead. Whoa, that is bold. I mean, d when a Doomsayer is played, th that's the opportunity for you to play Jaraxxus safely, but look how many cards they have left. They have eight cards left. If Doc Pwn's keeping track of the coin, at this point it's actually pretty likely that Frozen wow. has all of the pieces of the combo plus the coin, and Frozen gives a little smile, and he's like, oh man. That's a steal. I think I think Frozen stole this game. I think if Doc Pwn should play that Jaraxxus earlier in the Abyssal Enforcer, we see a totally different outcome, but Leroy Jenkins, power overwhelming, coin, copy it. Game three. Yeah, and, and Doc Pwn, not really much of a reaction out of him after that one. Uh, who knows? Maybe he forgot about the coin. Maybe he just didn't respect the combo and said, you know what? You got to have all the pieces. And if you don't have one of those pieces and I get Draxes up for a turn, I have an armor Kazakus potion. I have uh, defensive tools in my hand. I can stabilize if I live for this turn. Who knows if it was a risk? 
uh, or or uh, who knows if it was a little little bit of a misplay. But um, it, but it, one thing's for certain is that I, Frozen being behind all game is able to take that victory. Yeah, and and finally, uh, you know maybe a, a glimpse of mortality showing here for Doc Pone. He's been undefeated all tournament long in terms of matches. He's won every match he's played. Frozen comes away with a fairly decisive ending here. That Jaraxxus, um, you know, looking at the hands, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but I got to believe that Jaraxxus was, was a bit too risky for my taste. Yeah, now he did get some poor Kazakas potions, but he could have set up... Uh, just gain you know, 10 armor. Just gain 10 armor and try and move, move forward with that. Um, but I, I, I'd, I'd like to get a sauce on that one, or what's going through his head uh, in that play if he just feels like he needs to take the risk. Um, but there you can see him on your screen, maybe contemplating that, that last game. Is, is there a better way that I could have played that? Could, you know, if I had waited a little bit, could I have won? I mean, um, does, does something like that affect the way you're thinking about it, too? I mean, you slam Jaraxxus, you're fairly confident that this is the risk you're taking. You just instantly die the next turn. I mean, yeah. he gave up a lot of health there. E even if he just throws away one of the Kazakas potions, just gains 10 armor. I mean, yeah, he didn't two even of need them. to do anything. He could have just passed, too. And Frozen sets up a board, you clear that board with your Kazakas potion. I feel like that he had the tools to, to take that on. Yeah, one thing you can't do also is dwell on games that are in the past. We've heard a few players talk about that over the weekend is, you know, when you, when you lose or you get behind in a series, you just got to forget about those. Take it a game at a time. Uh, I've been in, in situations where I'm playing on ladder and I'll, you know, have a tough loss where I either made a mistake or, you know, my opponent got, you know, really, really fortunate with some of their draws. And I just keep thinking about that game. And, and before you know it, I'm on like turn five and I haven't played a single card. Yeah. I just completely forgot. Well, it's a reversal of roles here now. Doc Pone going to be on Pirate Warrior Frozen going to be on Reno Mage. And Doc Pone's list, uh, more traditional. No Finja package in here. Frozen was the only player ah, bummer. to run that option. So Doc Pone's list, I think, a little bit more consistent in terms of the early pressure. But as we've been seeing with some of the pirates in the later rounds, not drawing weapons can be a big liability. But getting steady off, off Finley, not a liability. Very much a strong advantage. Sometimes it's a liability. Maybe not necessarily in this matchup. Yeah, not right now, it's not. Something uh, to really look at, too, for Frozen's list is it's very similar to what Pavel ran uh, at the EU Championships. The Ethereal Conjurer is really the standout card to me. Uh, the extra creation of a card effect can really matter in longer games. But this isn't a longer game, and that's a heavy card. Oh, for a moment there, I thought Frozen was going to take a page out of Tare's book. The old dirty rat. The old turn to rip the rat. Yep, and this is one of the benefits of having that Finley in a steady shot is Doc Pone, when he sees this, sure, he gives up some board position, but he's started to make some headway on that life total. Yep, and Frozen gonna be looking to coin out either Ethereal Conjurer or Azure Drake if this lives. Uh, I, it won't live. Yeah, I think Doc Pone's gonna take this down. There's a chance that he may go for like the value play over time, which would be the Nazos first mate and Blood Soul Cultist guarantee value, but Corcoran leading into a 2-4 is a trade that's into an, an important 2-4, like Brand Brand Bronzebeard is, is important. And uh, again, this is a this is a semifinal match. These guys are playing for the, the chance of calling themselves the the America's winter champion. Uh, they are both still Bahamas bound. We will be seeing both of these players compete at the the winter uh, championship, the global championship uh, for winter. So still have had a successful day, but really important for them, you know, as players to to get that championship win under their belt. What a field we have so far. It's pretty intense. Yeah, and, and here's here's like the alternate use of Emperor Thoris on it and why it's such a strong card. In the, in the combo matchups, this card enables so much in terms of how you can play your end game and start to close. But against aggressive decks, it simply starts to catch you back up into the game. That Dirty Rat absorbed a lot of damage, and Frozen's going to need that extra mana access if he's going to climb back in here. Now he's got access to uh, a three damage Blizzard, thanks to the Blood Mage Thalnos and Emperor Thorson. He's got Refreshment Vendor at a discounted cost. His turn six, almost certainly Blood Mage Blizzard, and then on turn seven he can follow up with a three and a four costed card. So this is a wonderful string of turns for Frozen, but is he taking too much damage? It is a lot of damage, and right now he doesn't have any of those hyper-defensive cards. Reno Jackson. And is Doc Pone fearing this Emperor Thorson? I mean, he's got 12 damage on the Arcanite Reaper over two turns. Heroic Strike makes that 
16, and the South Sea deckhand makes that 18. Steady Shot makes it 20. Can Frozen even win if he keeps the Emperor Thoris on around? I don't think you're worried about a second Emperor tick because if he has Reno, whether it's six mana, five mana, four mana, heck, if it's free, he's still healing to full. Yeah, that's this isn't going to be enough. Frozen's actually, uh, I think, checkmated in this game. Regardless of how he plays this out, there's so much damage from hand for Doc Pony. He's got 14 from hand alone. Imagine if one of those was a Murloc. Hmm. If it was a Bluegill, it'd be all right. Wouldn't be buffed. He doesn't need the buff. Yeah, you're right. He probably wait, wait, that'd be a, a war leader right now. Probably would have beat him anyway. Yeah, this is the best turn Frozen's going to get, and just simply hope that Doc Pone doesn't have the damage remaining to close this, but uh, a decisive win for Doc Pone. The pressure too much. It's a 2-1 lead. Frozen's unable to keep up the trend that we've seen over the past couple series of Bruno Jackson showing up on turn six and it's gonna fall in the Reno Mage versus Pirate Warrior match. We've seen that match go back and forth across the entire tournament. Very volatile matchup uh, that's dependent on those few key draws from the Reno Mage. And even though Frozen had a, a pretty powerful start, just wasn't able to find those things. Yeah, something that I, I think to really note here though, is I feel like when I've been watching Doc Pone's games that his Reno Warlock play has really been struggling. I don't think it's been up to par. I think he's taken unnecessary risks. I think that he's lost sight of how to close these games. And the remaining decks, for Frozen, uh, it's the Finja Pirate Warrior, which I think Finja operates fantastic against Reno Warlock. Uh, and then there's his Reno Mage, but he doesn't have Pyroblast there. He's got Ethereal Conjurer instead. So can he buy the extra removal necessary in order to take on this matchup that's very heavy in terms of threats? Sylvanas, Ragnaros, Lord Draxus, and Mountain Giant, plus combo damage. That, to me, is going to be the big one. But we've seen Doc Pone. He took that risk versus Frozen in the Reno Warlock Mirror. Didn't pay off. Pirate Warrior, I think... A very high chance to, to take a game here. Is the Reno Mage going to get it done, or would Doc Pone close that game? I, I think that's the one thing I'm looking at here is, is that matchup's been shaky for him. Yeah, this would be a huge win for Doc Pone because it would mean um, his PhD would really mean something. Yeah, his Pone hard degree. That's why he's you Dr. Pone. That's what it stands for. All right, here we go. Yeah, Frozen wants the, the mage win first, it looks like. You know, this, this is likely the more important matchup for him. If he doesn't win this one, he's not getting there. He's got to win with both, of course, but he's confident in the Pirate Warrior matchup, I think. Yeah, I, I feel like this matchup is going to be pretty even. I, I, I think that the Reno Mage does have a slight favor overall, but there's a lot of text that you can be. That is a, that's a pretty good opening hand. He's got Brandon and Kazakas already. Wow, look at Doc Pone's hand as well. Mountain Giant and Faceless Shambler. This one's going to be explosive. These are some strong opening hands, TJ. Buckle in. If Frozen plays Brand here on turn three as well, uh, Doc Pone's going to be in a similar situation to he was in the uh, in the Mage matchup, which is Ooh, he's just ripping it. Yeah, right it, off the bat. Th this honestly kind of tells you where Frozen believes he is in the matchup too. Uh, he needs to take a risk like this and have it succeed. And now Doc Pone faced with the option of Twilight Drake or a weaker minion and wait for the Mountain Giant. If he coins out the Twilight Drake, that Mountain Giant is not getting accessed for quite some time. But if he coins out the Twilight Drake, he has faced the Shambler to follow it up. It's true. And then uh, on the following turn, he can, so I believe he can get a Mountain Giant. The big one here yeah, is that With Frozen, a tap too. The big one here is that Frozen is gonna land Kazakus alongside the brand. Maybe he chooses to go for Cabal Courier. Maybe he feels like direct removal is a stronger option. But right now, the onus is on Doc Pone to, to make a decision here. I don't I don't think there's a world where there's there's not a coin Twilight Drake here. Because then if you don't pick up removal, that brand's something for two turns. I agree. I think it's Twilight Drake all day. We actually saw Doc Pone in a, a you know very similar situation earlier, and he went with Imp Gang Boss. So maybe you know thinking of uh, different ways that he can get punished. And here here's uh, the typical Frozen. He goes for five first. Yeah, two fives this game. Well, he he feel he's gonna take the pressure out. I mean, I, it makes sense, honestly. I mean, he expects to face down, you know, Shambler here. He expects, expects to be able to face this 
uh, you know, a mountain giant sometimes. So polymorph a random en enemy and resummon. Oh, excuse me. He won't be able to thin him with tap with mountain giant, but mountain giant can still come down on turn five. So this one is. So it's polymorph a random enemy. Wow, he's mousing over him. Yeah, it, it's Here we go. polymorph and resummon, and then resummon and draw, I believe. Those are his two potions he's operating with. Decent potions. It's pretty good. I mean, this... I, I might have liked to see him take 110 here. Uh, just because there, it's, it's sometimes, it's actually rare that you find a situation where you can just pressure out. And it looks like he wants card economy. He's actually uh, sacrificed the Blood Mage first for the draw. Oh, that's his only other minion dead. That would be why. Yeah, it's just a free extra draw here then. Mm -hmm. You either have a Blood Mage or you don't. Those are the two options. That's, that's something else to really think about too, is uh, with Doc Pone's list, Frozen's gonna be under a lot of pressure if he draws his early threats. If that's the case, Frozen needs the card economy not only to keep up with the removal he's expending to handle threats, but also to get his own threats in that meantime. The extra cards mean a lot when you're fighting against Life Tap. So Mountain Giant just seems like, you know, wow. I know, I, this, this is what I was afraid of too, is that Doc Pone, he, he's played the matchups fairly greedy when he's been playing this Reno Warlock list. And, and the thing for me to really think about is how strong his, his top end is. I don't think he needs to play quite as greedy when he's in these situations. He just has massive threats that can close. I mean, here, the life tap makes some sense because he's got Emperor Thorson. You know, maybe digging for uh, another key card to reduce with Emperor Thorson. And the Twilight Drake is still really strong, but every turn he doesn't apply that pressure to Frozen, that's more time for him to find removal of these situations. And Frozen has plenty of removal to deal with this board. He's got Polymorph, he's got Frostbolt, Forgotten Torch. So we can, for example, Torch Frostbolt the Drake, attack and ping the Emperor Thorsan. You can use Polymorph and do, do sort of the same thing. He can, he, can, he can Dirty Rat and pull out a Mountain wow. Giant. That's not good for Frozen. That is a lot of stuff. Frozen is confused because... His read the, is that there's no way Mountain Giant could have been. <laughs> there's no way guy. that Mountain Giant could be in the hand this long. That's Frozen's read. That was that confused face from you Frozen know, right there. He is confused as to why that Mountain Giant didn't hit the board two turns ago. And Doc Pone, honestly, that might have been a thought that he had was, if I just don't play this Mountain Giant, maybe he dirty rats. I don't think so. <laughs> that is incredibly next level thinking. Well, he may have still found a way out of this. I mean, the Doomsayer here... Uh, it's, it's not actually challenged by Doc Pone's hand. And that doesn't challenge it, so that is heaps of value that Frozen could get in this spot. You know, if Doc Pone wants to take a risk here, his risk is quite literally play Ragnaros and hope it connects. Outside of that, that Doomsayer is hitting these three minions. I or just don't give him the satisfaction, just twisting Nether. <laughs> ah yes, expend more <laughs> to the Doomsayer. Critical resources be damned. <laughs> now, Doc Pone does get a second Emperor activation. That's big. Yeah, so maybe just tap pass. He's at 15, but he has Reno. That won't challenge the Doomsayer either. Frozen's second Kazakas potion is the summon two and then draw, I believe. Yeah, it's resummon two and draw two cards. So that's a great... Yeah, his pool will be two Blood Mage, two Brands, a Dirty Rat, a Burgly Bully, and a Doomsayer. So there is some chance of failure when he, when he snags Doomsayer. But with Alex Straza drawn, this is getting really interesting now because... Oh, I'm sorry, Kazakas is in the pool as well. So... If Doc Pone chooses to Reno Jackson, Frozen has no reason to play Alex Straza just yet. If he follows up with that, maybe he finds the damage to start closing. And he's going to pressure for Reno right away, launching that Forgotten Torch and hoping that Doc Pone is fearing this and plays Reno Jackson into the board. This is actually a brilliant play from Frozen. Yeah, he, he really is sort of showing that, hey, if you don't Reno, I might kill you. 
Now, there is no Ice Lance in Frozen's deck, and he's and Doc Pwn's already seen Frostbolt. Oh. So the only thing that would actually kill him is if Frozen I... drew Roaring Torch and had the damage afterwards. This is a good turn of ever to slam Draxus. Draxus can be the way that you get that that consistent pressure up to beat the mage. And then Alexstrasza is nullified. You have Twisting Nether to deal with it. You have a lot of stuff. This is a tough turn from Doc Pwn. His far left card, uh, you can barely see. It's, it's Imp Gang Boss, so not much use at the moment. Doc Pwn got punished for the Draxus <laughs> earlier on. Maybe he, maybe that has made him apprehensive about playing this. Well, it's it also could just get punished. I mean, if he runs into uh, Acidic Swamp Boost plus really any pressure, that's a lot of long-term damage he's losing. I mean, he's got Reno, he's got Rag, he's got Twisting Nether, he's got Shadow Bowl, he's got a ton of removal. Frozen. Did he really bait out the Reno Jackson? Unreal. I don't know if I like. I don't know if I like this. Doc Pone, he's he's just falling for for Frozen's tricks in this spot, and now he's got Firelands Portal and Roaring Torch. I don't know, Tej. Frozen's a little trickster. It's the double Ragnaros turn from Doc Pone. That's a lot of pressure. Frozen actually winces yeah. in this play. Uh, if both of those miss, Frozen, that was a win for Frozen, but unlikely at that stage. Blizzard isn't going to do anything to these. He can polymorph them. He can try and look for burn with with uh, Cabal Courier and see if he can do that over a few turns. There is an Ink Master in Frozen's list as well. So if he finds a big burn spell from this Cabal Courier, I don't know, say Pyroblast. He could just deliver 16 in one turn. Let's see. Juraxis. Well, Spawn of Shadows, Shadows is looking pretty good, too. The problem with Spawn of Shadows is that he's facing down at Ragnari? What do you call multiple Ragnaroses? Ragnaroses sounds weird. I think it's just Ragnaros. It's like moose. Look at all those moose. I'm with you. Look at all those Ragnaros. That's what it is. So he picks Ice Block. That's the safest of the options, I suppose. Yeah, so his plan here is to simply set up to kill Doc Pwn over a combination of turns, while at the same time protecting his life total. He knows Doc Pwn's got combo in the deck, so if he can assemble the damage necessary to kill Doc Pwn, that extra turn could be the kicker. I would have liked to see Spawn of Shadows. Honestly, I think I would have liked to as well. That's a lot of damage. That's one of the only ways you're going to find, like, extra burn. I mean, the burn in his deck has, has largely been expended at this point. Again, he's got Fireball as his only remaining burn spell that actually hits the face of Doc Pwn. He could have Firelands Portal face, put him to 10. Then next turn, Roaring Towards Spawn of Shadows ping. Sounds good to me. Be one damage over lethal. Whew. But I'm not frozen. Oh wait, frozen's not me. That as well. Those two things are typically mutually exclusive. When you're not someone else, they're also not you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Ragnaros is going to continue to rain fire down upon frozen. <sighs> He's just under so much pressure. One of the best cards against Reno Mage. Ragnaros. I wonder. Yeah, this is... I don't know. I guess Firelands Portal and just hope that Rag misses. I don't even know. But Firelands Portal, that's more damage that's, that's not going to face. That's more damage that Frozen's going to need to piece together to get through. Yeah, he's trying to just connect with anything. And Doc Pwn continues to find answers. I mean, he, he's got a lot of good stuff in hand. He could Siphon Soul on the Shadow Pan Raider. The, the one thing that he does need to make sure that he does is hold on to removal for some of these cards that might lose him the game on the spot. And I think the only one left remaining in the deck for Frozen would be Archmage Antonitis. He does have Twisting Nether for that. So maybe he feels like he can afford to spend a Siphon Soul on a minion that's 
not too threatening in Shadow Pan mm -hmm. Raider. Siphon Soul also gives him uh, some breathing room as well. I think that's really important. Yeah, he's gonna fit in a tap. Oh my. Find Sylvanas. That would allow him to simply steal Archmage Antonitis, should he see that. Alongside uh, the Shadow Flame in hand. I think Doc Pwn's got full control of this game. I think Doc Pwn just built this deck after he so saw the standard card changes and said, I'm just gonna put in all those cards. Power Overwhelming, Ragnaros, Sylvanas. Yeah, Frozen needs this uh, Ragnaros. I think he needs it to connect with the Acidic Swampoos here, too. I mean, going down to four, he does have Ice Block up, and he has Reno, so... Uh, the way that Frozen winced at that, I am going to believe he actually wanted to connect with Face. But this is the last hope here. Yeah. And that's gonna be a... I think it's very likely to be a stolen Duraxxus. Or, I'm sorry, a stolen Archmage. I mean, he doesn't, does he, he doesn't need to fear damage almost at all. One Fireball left in Frozen's deck. 12 cards left in the deck. 11 times that Frozen draws a card, you win the game. Well, maybe a Fireball's in the hand already. It's possible. I don't think there was any point in the game where he could have killed him from 12. So maybe that, that scares him, because he knows there's a guaranteed one Fireball, one Fireball, a natural Fireball in the deck, so there is 12 points of burn left. So regardless of what you do, you're dead to, to, to something. If you Jaraxxus to try and play around that 12 damage, ah. It means Archmage doesn't die every time. He could trade in Mistress of Victors. That's one thing that he can do. If that Archmage lives, Doc Pwn's gonna lose. Shadow Flame cost. I, I am still the maximum. I'm I am actually stunned that he's not killing this Archmage it's right away. He's going for the block pop or hit the Archmage and hoping that's going to be good enough. Oh Rose man, not Reno Jackson. Oh man. no, this was a huge risk. After all of this, the matchup Doc came Pone. down to whether or not Rag can connect. If this Rag misses, wow. And I think Frozen's done so now. I, I mean, I I can see where that play's coming from. So if he if he hits face and pops the block, he's not dead because he's at 15 and has set up taunt. So that way the damage from Archimedes Tennis can't connect and the 12 damage from fireballs wouldn't be able to finish him off. And then he could end the game the next turn. But that's still risky because Frozen could have just used that turn to develop like second ice block Reno and then start removing stuff off the board and make more fireballs. So uh, that is a, a very risky play and Frozen still trying to look for that second fireball in his deck, and also still trying to make his minions learn how to dodge Ragnaros shots. At this point, Doc Pwn's creating an Inferno every single turn, and he's likely to end up winning this game because of that, but I believe his risk here was very unnecessary. There is a nod to playing around the extra fireball from Frozen's hand. I think that's what he was, he was thinking. He made the read that there was a, that the natural fireball already in Frozen's hand. He said, which risk is better for me to take? Risk him killing me with the second natural fireball or risk me not necessarily dying next turn, but leaving Antonidas up for a next turn and maybe not being able to win from there. Frozen's minions die turn. <laughs> Just dying. After turn. Oh my goodness. After turn. Now he can, actually clear the Ragnaros out, which that is super important. And if you look at Frozen's hand right now, a couple of hero powers in a row, the ice block, Reno Jackson, I actually think he may have time to get out of this situation. He, what he has to do, I think it's our ping and face. Well, he, he does, but this is the setup for this. So he's hoping this Manic Soulcaster gets attacked by this Infernal, and then he can set up Flame Strike to clear that. But that's a Kazakistron. Doc Pwn about to find two potions. If he can find armor from either one of these, he'll probably be able to close out the yeah. game. If he finds armor from either one, I, th I think he wins. Frozen For needs three hero powers plus the other fireball in his deck, plus the time to do that. Dam that is an enormous task. Damage might also help. Oh, gain seven armor. And I really like the five mana pick because that allows him to play the Kazakus potion, gain the health, and be able to fit in the hero power uh, in a turn to keep on the pressure. And now he picks a 10 for a second one. 
No armor for this one, but it, it would kind of be, you know. It would a take a miracle for More Frozen. than necessary at that stage. Yeah, it's going to take a miracle for Frozen to win at this point. He's, he's really just got almost no damage left. There's still a babbling book, I think, in the deck. Like, maybe that can produce some big damage. But outside of that, his chances are slim to none. Right side. Flame Strike almost clears this board. <laughs> oh yeah, send something else in. Nope, he holds on to the gang boss. Wow. Ooh. Well, Frozen, Frozen's gonna play to this out right here. Get the Ice Block popped, play Reno Jackson to recover, fit in hero powers, and make it there. But he's gonna need something like Babbling Book into Cabalist Tome into Ice Block and damage if he's gonna win this game. It's gonna require an absurd amount of pressure. And Doc Pwn using the potion here to uh, fully protect himself and also pop the ice block at one. So a double acquisition for Doc Pwn and Frozen's in heaps of trouble. Yeah, he's, he, he can set up the Reno and he's not gonna die the next turn. There's 12, 13, 14, 17 damage on board. Amber Thorson doesn't help either. And Frozen goes ahead and concedes, which means Doc Pwn continues his undefeated streak in matches throughout the America's Winter Playoffs and also secures himself a spot in the finals. Nine and zero over the course of his matches. The greedy Reno Warlock deck just continues to pull massive weight. In this game, it was double Ragnaros that got the job done using Faceless Manipulator in the way it was initially intended to simply make a second minion. Uh, not finding its intended use in this particular deck, which was copying Leroy Jenkins for the extra damage. Just a second Ragnaros delivers a very decisive victory. Yeah, and we actually have Doc Pone now on the line with us. Hey man, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, first of all, uh, again, another congratulations for moving f forward. Uh, you've had an undefeated streak throughout the, the playoffs now. What would it mean to you to take it all the way and win the title uh, for the America's Winter Championship? Uh. Well, it means I think we're doing this for, I mean, the, the game, right? We're doing it because I, I believe that one, two, four is all going to Bahamas. So first or four, we're all going. But we're doing this so we can say, uh, well, I won a championship, right? I could say that if I win next round. And uh, it doesn't happen very often. So if, if I have a chance to uh, lock, a, lock a championship down, well, uh, I'll be happy to, uh, to tell everybody that I won a championship. Yeah, man, it's, it's working out for you so far. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about your uh, Reno Warlock deck. It's got a lot of top end in here. Talk to me uh, about how you came to this build and, and why you think it's been such a success for you over this week. Yeah, we tweaked. Uh, we, we made some weird cut. Like, um, I, I believe everybody's playing uh, Peddler, but uh, I believe um, it's not always a good card in the mirror. And especially against also against Reno Mage and every, and there's a lot of players that has been cutting Ragnaros, and Ragnaros in the Reno Mage meta is kind of like, I mean it's it's strong. So I I cut we cut Peddler, which is a weird card to cut, right? Everybody loves that card so much. Um, and uh, what else is uh, yeah? Well, what else is more greedy in the deck than uh, Ragnaros? There's uh, Sylvanas too. Me. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty greedy. I uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> it's pretty greedy. Well, it's working out for you. You've been you know beating a lot of those uh, other Reno decks. And and final question for you before I let you go to to prepare for for the finals here is, you know, how great would that feel to go the entire tournament without losing a single match? Uh, d did it ever happen to anybody? You're you're putting me on the spot here, but I <laughs> I don't think so. Usually we call it the Sw the first place Swiss curse. Uh, if somebody okay. goes undefeated in Swiss, they lose in the playoffs. Uh, so I don't think so, but but how would it feel? Oh, well, it would be awesome. I, I was just going there to have fun and uh, maybe you have a chance at 5-2, but having there, it's 9-0 now. So I believe 10-0 would be a great, you know, a nice number, you know, like really round number 10-0. I, uh, I think we're going to make it. All right, man. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. You have some time now before the finals to go lose a ton of matches on ladder uh, so that you don't <laughs> curse yourself ladders. going into the finals. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us, man. Good luck in your match later. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right. Well, Doc Pone is the first player going to the finals. And uh, you know what? We have uh, another semifinal coming up. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what these players 
uh, are, are these players are going to for the winter championships. It's the Bahamas. Yeah. The Hearthstone Championship Tour is heading to the Caribbean for the Winter Championships. Bring your beach towel and your best decks to the Bahamas. The Malia Nassau Beach Hotel will host the 16 worthy qualifiers from the playoffs. They'll be competing for a piece of a $2 million prize pool and a spa in the World Championships. It's Hearthstone in Paradise, the Winter Championships, March 23rd to 26th in the Bahamas. All right, there you go. There's are the players that are currently Bahamas bound who will be traveling to the Bahamas for that winter championship, the global winter championship uh, at the end of March. From Europe, Pavel Greensheep, Stan Udachi, and Iria from the Americas, Doc Pone utilizing his PhD in poning, Frozen, Tare, and Dr. Jikininki. And of course, the coverage does not end this week with the Americas. We still have four more players from our HDT coverage uh, that still have a chance to book their, their ticket to the Bahamas. Next week, the HTT Asia Pacific Winter Playoffs will take place February 24th and 25th. And uh, to bring us to action for the next semifinal, hey, it's Raven and Saul. Have you guys uh, been enjoying the matches so far today? I know that we're getting close to uh, the finals and crowning a champion. What do you think of that last match specifically? Yeah, the matches have been great. That, that last one was great. And I really enjoy his interviews as well. The guy seems like super humble. He's like, yeah, I just turned up to you know, try it at 5-2. And actually, now I'm just going for 10-0. Just think yeah. I can do it. And it shows the power of, uh, of just bringing good decks, right? We heard him say earlier that he just wasn't, he was kind of bringing some Mimi decks, some different stuff to the tournament. But now he, he tightens it up, he brings a good lineup, and he's sitting pretty at 9-0 through Swiss and the elimination bracket. Absolutely insane. Yeah, TJ strikes me as the type of guy who bring in uh, Mimi decks to a tournament. 